I'm your host, James Jordan, and this week it was Blackpool, and this week we've also got Emmy back. Hi, Emmy. Hello. I missed you last week. Francesca's lovely, adorable, but it it didn't feel quite the same. I felt like I was cheating on you. (laughs) Let's start with the darts off, who was eliminated. Should we get that out of the way so we can talk about who's left in the competition? Let's get it out of the way. Poor Angela. I think it was on the cards for the last couple of weeks. We've been saying it, haven't we? They came out, did an American smooth. It was beautiful. They looked amazing. It was a traditional, beautiful dance. Didn't really move around the floor that much. She was a little bit hunched over, but we understand why. She's 79. Uh, It doesn't have the same power that everyone else has, but I think she's been blimmin' brilliant. And Kai has done great with her, with the choreography and everything. So I think she's done great, but it was time to... It was time, but I, I completely agree with you. I sort of, you know, obviously we've talked a lot about was there some sort of decision that it was like BBC has to get her there for Blackpool. Um, and, you know, because there was some feeling that she shouldn't have won certain dance-offs and so on. But then just seeing her there on the Blackpool dance floor doing that really elegant dance and just, you know, the joy of someone enjoying something that much. I thought it was like a pleasure to watch and I'm actually really glad that she got to this point. But Bobby was in the bottom two and he was first out, wasn't he? Very good scores. Bottom two. Maybe too good. And I think that's part of the problem because even on the night when I tweet, because I tweet live sometimes if I'm if I'm actually watching it live, um, and I tweeted, oh, I love Bobby and Diane, and I'm like big fans of theirs now. I did put, I feel he's been slightly overmarked. Now, I would have given them an eight, okay? And I'll tell you why in a minute. They got eight, nine, nine, nine. So you could say, oh, but it's only one more point. But for me, it was never a nine. That's the thing. It was never a nine. It was a strong eight. See, the thing is, I expected his jive to be much worse. He's got really long arms. He's got really long legs. So to control your limbs when they're that long is very difficult in dances like jive. And I think he did a fantastic job. And Diane actually made the routine quite difficult. He was doing things that I was thinking, bloody hell, he's actually really dancing now. This is not just... I found him a bit gangly at the beginning, not really that much in control of his body. And I feel as the weeks are going on, he's actually one of the people that I really see progressing as a dancer. We've got the likes of Leighton, who is amazing every week. Ellie, amazing every week. Nigel, amazing every week, apart from his mistakes. Um, And then you've got Bobby, who I feel has slowly, 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 each week getting better and better. And that, for me, is what Strictly is about. So I have to tip my hat to them and say they were brilliant. However, I think the judges, giving them the scores they gave them, put this false pretense in the the public's head that they were going to be safe because all the comments were amazing. The scores were really good. He was quite high up the leaderboard, and you kind of then go, ah, he's safe. From what I've seen and feedback I've seen, he's been like the people's favourite. Everyone's loving him. So how has he ended up in the bottom two? He's the people's prince. So I just think it's because everyone else had um, something happen, whether it be because Nigel messed up, had a reason for people to vote for them. Bobby didn't because he was kind of overmarked. If they'd been really harsh on him, I think people would have picked up the phone. But they weren't. So I just think he it, he's just had an un fortunate week and I do think now that he's been in the bottom two he won't be there definitely won't be there next week unless he has a disaster because people will be like I love him I'm voting for him this week no matter how he dances Leighton and Nikita which was a couple's choice it wasn't Argentine Tango or Pasek but it was very dramatic I thought um but but what did you make of it okay let me start by saying he is amazing Leighton is the best dancer Strictly has ever had on it. No question. Craig said it as well. You are, Craig said, you are the best dancer I have seen on this show in 20 years. I'm not arguing with that. He's amazing. Did I think that dance has a place on Strictly? Absolutely not. 
if you had given it a 10, I'd go, yeah, I, I get that. I, I understand why you've given it a 10. There were some synchronicity issues where I felt they weren't doing the same thing, which Craig picked up on. So I gave it a nine, but I'm not denying the fact it's amazing. He does things that I would love to be able to do. His flexibility, his flips and things like that. He is a beautiful dancer and I think he's amazing. But for me, that is not strictly. That's just my opinion. Now, put in your comments below, guys. I'm sure there's lots of people that totally disagree with me and that's fine. This is why it's called Strictly the Truth. I'm giving my opinion on what I feel. I'd be lying to myself if I told you how much I loved it when I really didn't enjoy watching it. I thought it was amazing, but it has no place on Strictly. That's my feeling. And people could go, oh, you've got to move with the times. You know, things have moved on. Borum and Latin dancing has moved on. That wasn't a Borum and Latin dance. It's a totally different genre. For me, you know what, what surprised me? Because I've actually been really looking forward to the, their couple's choice dance. I'm like the opposite of you. I've been really looking forward to it because I thought that they do ballet. I thought that they, because that's what Leighton's an, an expert in, isn't it? That's what he's a professional in. And I was like, wouldn't that have just been the perfect opportunity for them if they're showcasing that they could choose to do anything. They would choose something that he was already a professional in. So I thought that was interesting. And I would have preferred that because they could have then danced with each other much more to be in that couple. The, the, the skill for me that Strictly has that people fell in love with is that connection that they have when they're dancing with each other. And there was none of that. For me, there was, like I said, listen, I know I'm being very harsh about it. There's no place on Strictly for that kind of dancing. That's just my opinion. Put your comments below. Let me know if you agree. If you don't agree, I'll, I'll say, I'll hold my hat up and say, okay, I'm an old fuddy-duddy now and I have to move with the times a little bit. But I believe a lot of people do agree with me that they don't think there's any place for that kind of dance on Strictly. I've got to say, though, like personal preference on couples choice dances or not, I think it should have been a 40. I think Craig was stingy with his paddle and it should have it should have been a 10. If they had got a 40 for that, I'm not saying it's wrong because the dance was amazing. It was it was beautiful. Not my bag, but I can still admire amazing dancing. Doesn't mean I have to like it. It was it was fantastic. And I think Nikita also did a great job keeping up with him because that's not his genre of dance and he did a great job keeping up with him. So I I like I said I didn't think it was bad and what actually made me laugh was when a little bit was when Nikita said I don't know what more we've got to do because he got a nine a nine is they still look a great disa score. they look disappointed they look disappointed that they got 39 and the public gonna like that why is he holding out though why is Craig holding out that's my question yep I understand that I think he's maybe been watching Strictly the Truth maybe <laughs> made, I'm not joking maybe hi he Craig made, we, hi, Craig. Hi, judges. Um, we know that certain people are watching Strictly the Truth, which is great because people come here because maybe they want to hear another side, not one that is, you know, controlled perhaps by the BBC, certain things they want them to say, for example. Um, but I do believe that he didn't give a 10 that week because everyone knows that I've been saying... Craig was going to give out a 10 at Blackpool. Because for me, they could have clearly got a 10, as could Ellie. Well, let's move on to um, Annabelle and Johannes, who did very well, like really, really good scores. And I thought it was it was beautiful. I, I think he's, he's really turned her into a dancer, hasn't he? So they danced the American Smooth. The feeling I got from it was very similar to what they did in their couple's choice. And I loved it. I love their couple's choice and I love this. I find that style of dance suits her much better. She just looks at home. She looks at ease. She's got time. She extends. The problem I have with them, this is the problem I have with them. Um, they've had two amazing dances, but both very similar kind of feel. If they want to become contenders, they have to do a faster, more upbeat dance to the same level to be able to suddenly become contenders. Otherwise, they are at risk 
in the next couple of weeks of being the ones eliminated. I see what you're saying. I, you know, I was watching it and I did feel though, you, like she has improved so much and I don't think like it, she would have improved or stayed in as long as she had without Johannes. I just, I think he's made her such a beautiful, wonderful dancer. I just, I, you know, I think that's such a, maybe such a reason that they got through was that their friendship and camaraderie is really coming out. Yeah, it is. And like I said, I never really saw it that much at the beginning. I mean, she came out week one with an amazing dance, I, didn't she? I didn't think she'd last that long. But... No, nor did I. And I do think that is testament to Johannes as a teacher. Um, and you can see she has that softness that he has in his dancing, which I really enjoy. Shall we talk uh, about Ellie and my favourite baby boy, uh, Vito? I cannot speak highly enough that about that routine they came out and did a charleston charleston is always a fun dance anyway i didn't think they had the best music choice but the oh, routine I that song yeah it didn't really and i think that's the reason why some people at home don't like it and that's why i say the music is always so important because the music can make the dance and make people feel it's better than it is it can even trick professionals Professional dancers can sit there and go, that was amazing, where they're not watching the dance. Now, I was watching the dance. It was, that dance was so full on. That was a really, really tough, intricate routine. Some of the lifts that they did were exceptional. And it's not about the difficulty of the lifts. It's about how seamless they were going from the lift back into the dance. It was almost like it was so smooth. They made it look so easy, which is maybe part of the reason why I don't believe that it was given as much justice as it deserves. Because I've been watching social media and people going on about Angela and Carlos, which I'm not taking anything away from them. It was a great dance for them. But you can't compare it to what Ellie did with Vito. It's a different level. It's a different stratosphere. That Charleston was clearly four tens and I have no idea why it didn't get four tens apart from the fact he's watching Strictly the Truth and didn't want to give out a 10 because I said he was going to <laughs> I it. can you fault it I mean guys what what why are people not going mad about the fact they didn't get four tens I mean the the crowds were you know you're getting that 40 chant but uh but yeah no they're I think they've been past you at like 40 score the, they like so many of the different performances could have been 40s at this point i would actually go as far as saying ellie and Vito could have had three possibly four 40s and i think um layton could have had two possibly three 40s as well um so that that 10 from craig is definitely overdue but um yeah, I don't know why. Next up, we had uh, Argentine Tango, my fave, with uh, Carlos and Angela. Uh, and really good scores from them. Um, but once again, Craig being stingy with his paddle. I mean, what did you what did you make of it? Well, the thing is, people say he was stingy with his paddle. I um, actually wrote on my notes that Craig, in my opinion, was spot on with his... Now, I always make sure I put tweet my scores before any of the I see any of the judges scores so he was up until the last dance I think we marked everyone exactly the same apart from um Ellie and Carlos I gave a 10 he gave a 9 and I think Nigel I gave an 8 he gave a 7 everyone else we marked exactly the same so I gave Angela and Carlos an 8 great production it was dark it was it was theatrical, the lights around the side. Some people might say a bit distracting, but you had the production value. They had powerful costumes. The choreography was great. But when I looked deep into the dance, she wasn't really doing that much. Argentine tango doesn't have the same amount of steps as some of the other dances. Um, it, it was dramatic. I get that but it's a different dance level to someone like Ellie or Leighton. 
But then I watched it back again because I've got lots of people saying, oh, you're being so stingy with your anchor. Blah, 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 blah. So I had a look back and I watched it again and I tried to look at it just as a normal punter, just trying to enjoy the show. And I did really enjoy it. I have to say, I'm, I'm going to say I'm not wrong given an eight because that's what I felt the first time I watched it. And I understand why I gave the eight, but you could quite easily give it a nine as well. Definitely not a 10. She, there wasn't the intricacies. There wasn't the dance ability there. It was just a really powerful dance, A, because of the music, the drama, the production and the choreography. But when you looked at the dance, it wasn't as strong as it could have been. We had uh, Nigel and Katya closing the show. And Nigel, I think he's getting so frustrated with the scores because they, yeah, they, they second lowest scores of the night, seven, eight, eight, eight. What did, what did you make of it? I don't think it was wrong that he, he was that low down the leaderboard. If there's people going out there like Bobby improving every week, he didn't make any mistakes. In fact, Bobby was so on it, musically, everything. It, what, what is the problem now with Nigel? Is he, is he, getting that anxiety inside that he feels he's going to mess up. I don't think it's that. Is he, is he not, are they not going through it enough? Because when I used to dance with my celebrities, and I'm sure Catch is doing the same, I'm just trying to think, why is this happening? I, I used to go through the routine so many times to music. I'm talking, I used to press play again. Okay, let's do it again. Bang, again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Until the, the steps were so ingrained in your body However, I never really, apart from maybe when I danced with Denise Van Outen, had anyone that was a good enough dancer that was able to cope with more difficult choreography, where Nigel is able. And the choreography that she's given him is very difficult and very intricate. Like I said before, a few weeks ago, either she needs to make it a little bit more easy for him, which he will hate the sound of that, as soon as you say to a celebrity, we need to make a routine a little bit more simple so you can cope with it. They're like, no, I want it difficult. I want, I want it hard. I will get it. I will get it. But then you don't get it. You're still making mistakes, mate. And some people are saying the judges were too harsh on him. No, they weren't. Mm. At the end of the day, it's a competition and he's making mistakes. It was still a great dance. I still would have scored him an eight. I think we should announce the danger zone because I think that maybe Nigel and Katia are in it. So let, let's talk about it. Who do you think will be in the bottom two next week? You know what? It's at this stage of the competition, even I'm struggling and I'm all knowing, all seeing, aren't I? Bobby was in the bottom two last week, obviously. I'm going to say he won't be in the bottom two this week. It's kind of... The other three now, isn't it? It's kind of Annabelle, Angela, Nigel. I've got to put, and I can't believe I'm saying it. I've got to put Nigel in the mix. Although he was saved this week, if he doesn't come out and smash it, people are going to get fed up of him making mistakes. I do think it, it should have been him in the bottom two this week, which, you know, and, you know, we love Nigel on this show. He's done some absolutely amazing dances, but... Yeah, I, I do think that maybe it should have been him and Katya and not Bobby and Diane in the dance off. And maybe, you know, like we like like you said, it's like he's done some amazing shows, but I think if those nerves get in again, then yeah, we could we could we could be seeing that. Even though he's like a we've been, you know, we've said he's a finalist and he's been amazing. It's yeah, it's sort of getting to that point now, isn't it? Where it really could be anyone's. Yeah, I it could, and that's the thing. It could be anyone because I totally agree with you on dancing. Hundred percent, he should have been on in the bottom two, no question. The reason I love Strictly is because the public sitting at home have the opportunity to save their favorite, and people could say, "Oh, but then it becomes um, a popularity contest." Yeah, to a certain extent, because if it was a proper dance competition. Leighton or Ellie have already won, okay? So people saved Nigel because they know how good he has been in previous weeks. And I think that's great that people picked up the phone and voted for him. 
I feel sorry for Bobby to be in the bottom two because I don't think he deserved it. But also, I I kind of understand why Nigel wasn't in the bottom two. People are going to give him another chance, but they're not going to give him too many more chances. If he doesn't come out next week, I fear for him. And then you're thinking Angela and Carlos and Annabelle and you, Johannes could be down there as well. There is that potential that Leighton, because it's getting to the stage now when I think if one more couple goes, it's going to start testing how popular Leighton is. Because we know his, it's between him and Ellie. They're the two best dancers in the show. Yeah, no question. And whether you think he's better or she's, he's, he's a better dancer, no question. But she is creating, in my opinion, better performances. Um, he's going to be tested soon because there's less and less couples. Therefore, the less couples they get, the easier it is to drop in the bottom two. He's not been tested at all yet because he's been so far. He'd have to drop so many places on public vote. It's almost impossible. There's no way Leighton cannot be in the final. I agree. I can't have that. I'll vote myself. I'll just vote. <laughs> um, okay. And who are we saying for MVP for Blackpool? MVP. Now, can we explain to people, because I've noticed lots of people saying, what does MVP mean? This is something that you came up with, right? Because it <laughs> means most valuable player. It's a bit of a fun term for your favourite your favourite, the best, the best of the week, the man of the match. I have to go Ellie. Because for me, it's it was so difficult. It was such a difficult routine that they made look so easy. Um, so it, I, I, it was 40, no question. Yeah, yeah. See, this is a bit of a random one for me, but I think my favourites were Annabelle and Johannes. I thought it was so beautiful. I just loved it. There you go. So you would have picked up the phone and voted for them. So that shows you why Bobby ended up in the bottom two, doesn't it? Because you would you you enjoyed their performance. You knew they weren't the best, but you loved their journey with each other and you picked up the phone and voted for them. So there you go. Thank you so much for joining us for another week of Strictly the Truth. Please leave all your comments. We love hearing from you. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more content and head over to hellomagazine.com for more Strictly news in the meantime. And we will see you next week. See you next week. Bye.